Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today we're here with a very, 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 very exciting video or I would class it as exciting. Um, <laughs> recently the Spotify wrapped playlists and kind of stats have come out for everyone who uses Spotify. If you use Apple Music then I don't know what you're doing because Spotify is a million times better when it comes to wrapping up your stats of music for the year. So I came up with this video idea where I recommend 10 books based on my top 10 songs of 2020. This is kind of like, you remember that old school booktube video where people recommended books based on their playlist on shuffle? The, I think it was called the playlist book tag. Kind of like that but a little bit different because this is literally my favourite songs of 2020 in book form. Some of the books that I'm going to recommend are a bit of a jokey recommend because I didn't enjoy them that much but they fitted with the song very well so just bear with me guys and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna try and not get copyrighted because I do really want to play the songs so we'll see how we get on but I'm very very excited for this video so without further ado let's just jam out some some good tunes or I cast them as good tunes because they're my top 10 songs of 2020. Right let's go into chipmunk version for the first song. The first song is I'm actually quite surprised that this was my top song of 2020 but it was nevertheless it's One Margarita by Luke Bryan. I'm a massive country fan. This is one of Luke Bryan's most recent single releases of his album that came out in August I want to say brilliant beachy vibes so let's go So yeah, that was one Margarita, Luke Bryan, and the book I'm going to recommend based off that song is Alice Approximately by Jen Bennett. I read this book at the very beginning of 2020 and fell in love with it. I gave it a four stars. I really, really enjoyed it. This book is about a young girl who moves to a seaside town when her parents get divorced. So she goes and lives with her dad for the summer, but she has been talking to this guy online she's never met before called Alex but she's moving to the town that he says he's from, but she doesn't want to say that and meet him in person in this town. She wants to kind of settle in and get used to the town first. She kind of keeps that she's moving a secret from him, even though they talk like every day and they know absolutely everything about each other. And then she gets a job as a tour guide at this castle and she meets this different boy and romance ensues on a beach town around summertime. It's just a really, really cute romance set on the beach in the summer where surfing is such a massive plot point in this and it's just it was just such a fun read and I just really recommend it. I don't think I've spoken about this book very much because I did read it at the beginning of the year and obviously I only started my channel in June so I thought I would mention this one. I did love it and it just gave me beachy vibes hence one margarita being a very beachy song. They fitted perfectly together. Next song on my top songs of 2020 is absolutely no surprise to me because it's a Jonas Brothers song. I saw them at the beginning of the year, right before the whole world just went into mayhem. But it, Jonas Brothers was the last concert I went to in 2020. And this song, I think, just sums up my 2020 so well, because it's like obviously the last memory I had before the world went to shit. And it's just such a brilliant song. This is my second song most played in 2020. So yeah, that's a What's a Man Gotta Do by the Jonas Brothers. Such a good song. Oh my God, it never gets old. Fucking love that song. The, bo <laughs> the book I'm going to recommend based on that song is Pretending by Holly Bourne. 
as this book is about a girl called April who has recently come out of an abusive relationship and she's trying to rediscover herself after that trauma of sexual assault and she just wants to be in a relationship, that's all she wants, so she tries to tie herself to any guy possible and she does push them away and they push her away and she just can't find love and it's about her discovering herself after this trauma that she's ensued and just the girl power of finding female friendships that are going through the same thing as you and it was just such an empowering read and I loved it and I just felt that the lyrics with, of that song and this book kind of fitted quite well together. Don't kind of question my recommendations on songs too much, it's all just a bit of fun but I'm just recommending books I liked with songs that I loved in 2020 so yes, recommending this book if the trigger warnings of sexual assault abusive relationships are, aren't sensitive to you, if you can cope with that topic, highly, highly recommend you reading this book. It was amazing. The next, <laughs> the next song I have kind of like a story to, and that's because it's Blinding Lights by The Weeknd, which is a spin song through and through. Every time I listen to it, I'm just like, I could just jam out to that song on my spin bike. It's just such a good spin song. So I've listened to that a lot because obviously I spin a lot. So I've listened to that song a lot. Therefore it's made my top three of 2020. So that's Blinding Lights by The Weeknd and for that one I'm recommending The Danger Gang by Tom Fletcher. Not so much based on the lyrics, more so based on the vibe of the song. This song is obviously very 80s inspired and this book just didn't give me 80s vibes but it gave me Stranger Things vibes which is obviously set and inspired by the 80s. So that's kind of the link that I kind of made between this book and Blinding Lights as the song. This book was just so much fun to read. The song is just so much fun to dance to. This book basically follows a little boy, it's a middle grade, about a little boy called Frankie who has just moved to a new town called Freaky and lots of freaky stuff starts to happen so he creates the danger gang and they go on their bikes around the town and solve lots of unsolved mysteries and it's a fun quick read to get through and Tom Fletcher never fails to entertain me with his whimsical and magical imaginative writing. Just a great book. And the next song really really did surprise me. I think it's one of probably one of the songs that surprised me the most. Um, and I don't even know why it's made my top four. This is my fourth most listened to song of 2020. It's X by Jonas Brothers. See, I don't even know the lyrics. Why has that made my top four? I don't know. And this book is set, is set at a party where the main character, Jack, relives the same day, starting at the party where he meets Kate to try and save her life. It's a very repetitive storyline. I don't really recommend it, but I know a lot of people do enjoy it. And it was just the most fitting book that I read in 2020 for this song, if I can even fit it together. I don't know, this video is just a bit of fun. So bear with me and just go on the ride of a roller coaster <laughs> like I'm going on. So yeah, the next song, we're taking a slow tempo, but I definitely know why this song has made my top song for 2020. I have listened to it so much because it's a country song inspired and written about COVID-19 and it just, it hit me in the feels and I love this song so much. It's Luke Combs, Six Feet Apart. And it goes on to make me cry because I'm almost crying now. Um, 
Ah, I wasn't meant to cry in this video. This is a fun video, Rachel. Um, <laughs> that song just hits me in the feels. I get very emotional when I listen to it. Just sums up our year to a T and I love that song. The book I'm recommending, so I didn't even hold it up because I got too emotional, is Birthday by Mar Meredith Rosso. This book basically follows two characters, I've forgotten their name even though it's like a five star book for me, Eric and Morgan, who were born on the same day. So this book basically follows them through 18 years of their life and only meeting and their stories interlinking once a year on their birthday. Hence birthday as the title and they're best friends but they only ever see each other once a year on their birthday but Morgan is kind to come to terms with being trans and figuring out his identity and who he wants to be and it's just a brilliant story about self-discovery and growing up and just you you hit all his different life milestones throughout his entire life and I just I absolutely adored this book and the reason I connected it to with Six Feet Apart is because they're pretty much always miles apart because they only ever see each other once a year on their birthday so it's kind of like the more the distance thing and connecting to people kind of more virtually than in real life with touch so that's the reason I picked this book I absolutely adored it it's one of the first books I ever read in 2020 and it was beautiful and it kicked my year off perfectly highly recommend this book if you haven't read it already now we're going back to a more upbeat song, thankfully, but it is another crunchy song because I love country music. It's my favorite genre, although my top genre for 2020 was pop. I don't know why. It's either pop or country. It always differs between those two each year. But it was pop this year. However, the next song is country and it's Thank You Lord by Thomas Rhett, Chris Tomlin and Florida Georgia Line. Three of kind of my favorite country artists. They all merged together. And did this song and it, it's just so uplifting and such a beautiful song. So that was Thank You Lord by Thomas Rhett and co. <clears throat> and I'm gonna recommend Ivy Aberdeen's Letters to the World for this one, just because this book was just such a feel good book and that song for me is such a feel good song and it just makes me appreciate for what I have and be grateful for what I have. And I think this book, Ivy definitely recognizes that at the end to be grateful for what she has because this book follows Ivy trying to discover who she is. She doesn't really know how to express herself, so she resorts to drawing pictures of girls holding hands in her journal. But one day, a tornado rips through her home and she has nothing left apart from this journal. But one day it goes missing and she kind of starts getting blackmailed by it, but not by who you think. And it's just a beautiful book about friendship, about family and realizing what you have and what you need is it materialistic to make you happy it's who you surround yourself with and i think those kind of that this book and that song kind of just go perfectly hand in hand together i love this book it's one of my favorite middle grades i've read in 2020 and i highly recommend you read it if you haven't already the next song i am once again surprised by but it's because it's such a good spin song so i've listened to it a lot to choreograph routines to and listen to on my spin bike that's One Touch by Gless Jess Glynn. I don't think it even came out this year. So we're throwing it back.
So that was One Touch by Jess Glynn and for that song I am recommending After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I have only very recently read this book but it's all about two main characters called Lauren and Ryan who have been together for about 13 years and married for six but they come to a point in their marriage where they're very stagnant and they're starting to hate each other basically. So they decide to take a year apart and try and fix their marriage and I just adored the two characters in this. I think they were so well written and you could just tell that they were meant to be together. They were soulmates and with just one touch, they needed to be together. <laughs> so this book is a lot about self-discovery, about family connections, about romance and how people can take love and appreciate love on different levels and everyone has their own way of coping and understanding and being in a marriage and I think it was so well discussed and so well written and I enjoyed the characters and I think those two songs kind of fit well together because Lauren and Ryan are meant to be together <laughs> so yeah if you read this book you'll understand why I said that but yeah recommending that book for One Touch by Jess Glynn. I have an ebook so I can't hold it up and the next one is Dan and Shay. Dan and Shay are two of my favorite people in the world. They're a country duo and they're just brilliant and they've been releasing some brilliant music this year. One of them has reached my top 10 songs of 2020 and that is I Should Probably Go To Bed. And it goes on all about that you shouldn't go to bed um, and when it comes to reading and um, people readers you know and I know I'm not alone that sometimes books just keep us up but we know we should probably go to bed so this one has no the lyrics have no connection to the plot whatsoever but it was a book that kept me up all night so I could finish it because I just needed to know what happened and that was Lucy in the Sky by Paige Toon. This book basically follows a girl gets out of her relationship and decides to fly to Australia to be with her best friends who have migrated there. Yeah and it's just all about her summer when she goes and lives by the beach with her best friends and it has a really really good cute romance in it and I just needed to know what happens and it was a cute fun read. I didn't give it the best rating, I gave it a three stars but it did keep me up all night when I knew I should probably have gone to bed. So that's a connection with those two and I'll put a picture up of the cover on the screen because I don't have a physical copy of it. The next two are more jokey, that's for sure. Both of them I'm unhauling. Um, all the other books I'm keeping but the two that I'm about to mention I have actually unhauled. And the eighth song in my top 10 is What She Wants Tonight by Luke Bryan, another one of my favourite country artists. And this was one of his singles out the very end of last year or the beginning of this year. I didn't expect it to be in my top, but clearly it is because I played it a lot. I didn't think I played it that much. I definitely played one margarita more, but this is what she wants tonight. <laughs> So for what she wants tonight, I'm going for Get A Life Chloe Brown because this is one of the more steamy books I read this year, had a lot of explicit sex scenes in it. I didn't love this book, I thought it was way overhyped, booktube definitely overhyped it for me. Um, I didn't really love it all that much, I didn't like Chloe as a main character and the only reason I kept reading it was for Red's storyline but it's definitely very steamy and this song is all about sex pretty much. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I just went with this one because it's one of the steamier books I read this year and it kind of fitted quite well because it's all about discovering what Chloe wants in life despite her chronic illness so it kind of just fitted quite well. I've only got one more song to play for you and then I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's actually gone on. I've been filming for half an hour but the last song I have on my playlist I loved during the summer and it was on repeat I absolutely loved it but it's one of those songs that I played so much I now absolutely hate it so I've picked a book that I enjoyed at the time but I no longer care about and I'm unhauling so let's just go
everyone knows that song. It was the summer hit of 2020, I feel like, but I just played it so much that I now actually really don't like the song, um, only if I'm in a very specific mood. So I've picked Bloom by Kevin Panetta. This is a graphic novel about a boy who works in his family's bakery, but he doesn't want to work there anymore. He wants to go to a big city and become a musician with his band. So his parents ask him to find someone else to take his place. But when he finds someone to take his place, he starts to fall for him and they end up working in the bakery together. This is an LGBTQ plus plus graphic novel series. And I did enjoy it at the time and I had a blast reading it, but I don't care for it anymore. I don't need it in my life, so I've actually unhauled it. It's in a cardboard box waiting to be unhauled. I have yet to unhaul it, but you get the gist. I loved it, but now I don't really care for it. Same with Rain On Me by Lady Gaga and Ara Undergrande. So, ah, those are the books I recommend. Not really, some of them I recommend, some of them are just connecting these song lyrics to book plots, but I had so much fun filming this video and reminiscing over all the songs I loved in 2020, as well as some of my favorite books of 2020. Obviously some didn't make the list, but I'll be doing a full best books of 2020 and worst books of 2020 video. So be on the lookout for that and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it because everyone loves a bit of negativity on Butch. <laughs> So be sure you don't miss all my negative thoughts of all the worst books I read in 2020. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, make sure you give it a massive thumbs up and subscribe down below for more content from me. I make all bookish content, fun videos like this, serious videos like... I don't make serious videos. <laughs> I just make fun bookish content so if you want to follow me and join the little book family that I've created on here then make sure you press that big red button down below and I would appreciate it like no man's business. I absolutely love making content and watching my family, my little community grow just means the absolute war to me. So yeah, do all the fun stuff down below and make sure you should check the description for all the songs and books I've mentioned in this video and without further ado I will see you in my next one. Bye guys!